CloudFormation versus CDK, Cloud Development Kit. I have always rejected CDK because it was an imperative style. You write code and that would generate your infrastructure. I prefer the declarative model where you basically say what, the, what, the, what you want the end state to be. And after playing with the CDK version for Go, I think I understand the, the benefit here. What happens here is that you write your cloud formation in code. Why is that useful? It's useful because you get auto completion. Because basically, writing these YAML um, you know, stanzas like AWS colon SS3 bucket, it's, <laughs> it's really hard. You, I, I don't, I don't think it auto completes. Like you know, does it auto complete? Yeah, it does. I think it, maybe that's Copilot down here. Um, but the idea, I think, with with um, the, the the Go bindings to CDK, which is actually bindings on on TypeScript, is that you go AWS, you know, S3 dot, and then you you know create uh, or is it new bucket right? And then you you know you get your construct um, stack bucket name. I mean it should be it should be easier than it should be um, the IDE should complete everything, but unfortunately it doesn't really. I find um, I'm having to like paste in snippets here. Like I don't know where did I see one. It gets tricky because you need to use some of their types, and you know these 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 like I don't know, kind of non idiomatic ways of of defining extra information and things like this. I guess once you get into the flow of it, it won't be that bad. It will be easier than writing YAML, basically, um, and then. And then you do like a CDK, okay, I've got to save that, don't I? You do a CDK synth and then it generates the, uh, the, the cloud formation. What is interesting about the way CDK generates cloud formation is that it's verbose by default. So all the, um, like for example, let's see, you know, the deletion policy is explicit. Meanwhile, you know, when I'm using, when I'm doing it myself, I, I would have forgotten to, to sort of put that property because I would have relied on the defaults. But I think the CDK generating the defaults, making it explicit, is kind of handy. To be honest, there's a lot of noise here, like this weird analytics crap. <sighs> but I think I got the promise of CDK. I think I understand the promise of CDK. However, one thing I don't understand is the, I don't know, the, how do you test it? Because I noticed on the CDK channel, they say you shouldn't mix um, API calls in your CDK code. So, okay, don't mix API calls in your, in your, in your, in your CDK code. So, but how do I come up with some Go tests to make sure that my, you know, my CDK applied, uh, sorry, deployed, um, stuff is, is, is correct, you know, there needs to be tests, ideally. And if you can't do API calls or it's considered bad to do the API calls, how are you supposed to do it? You tell me. Oh my gosh, it's really too long, isn't it? Thanks for getting this far. I think this is what CDK is about, at least on Go. Bye.